Now in the previous video what I did was show you how we could solve this particular problem by looking at the probability of x being greater than or equal to 31 and if it was less than 10% we would reject HO. But now I'm going to show you how we can do it by a critical value method. And the critical value method says that if we've got a value, let's just say R, let's put it here, we're expecting values round about the mean here, 24. But there comes a point where when we exceed this value of R, we reject HO. So at this point here, we reject HO. Okay, let's put that down, reject HO. In this region, we accept HO. So we need to find that value of R. And to do that, I'm just going to write that we reject HO if the probability that S is greater than or equal to R, given that the null hypothesis is true, that is P equals 0 0.20, turns out to be a value less than 10%, 0 0.10, okay? Now it did say use a suitable approximation to do this test. And in the previous video, I showed you that it was the normal distribution because certain criteria were met, that NP and NQ turned out to be greater than five. So S could be approximated to a normal distribution. So I define this random variable X that followed this normal distribution. Had a mean of 24 and variance of 19.2 because NPQ gave us that variance. So when it comes to working this out, what I'd want to do is draw up my normal distribution for X. Remember it has a mean of 24 and we've got below it the standardized normal distribution. Now we're looking for a value, okay, which exceeds, is exceeded by 10%. So I've got to go back to the standardized distribution table and let's just imagine we've got this value here, the value of Z here. And this corresponds to the observed value up here, which we exceed with a probability of 10%. Let's just shade that in there. Now, what would that Z value be? Well, if this area here is 0 0.10, from your inverse normal distribution tables, you should be able to see that the Z value that corresponds to this turns out to be 1.2816. Let's just put that in. Z equals 1.2816. So what that means is that I can look at this observed value up here. And we've got to be very careful with this type of work. As I mentioned earlier, we've got to use continuity corrections because we're going from a discrete random variable to a continuous random variable. So that means that this value here, it's as if we have a rectangle, a box round here, of unit width, okay? Now, the value that R would be, okay, would be this central line here, R. But this value to the left of it would be R minus 0.5. That's when we make the continuity correction. So that value would be R minus 0.5. Remember the width of this is one unit. If you're unsure about continuity corrections, you can always go on my website, look under the tutorials for continuity corrections. And it is R minus 0.5 because we want to have a probability of being greater than or equal to R. It must include R, so it's got to go to the far edge of this bar here. Okay, well, we know that 
any z value is given by the observed value, which in this case is going to be r minus 0.5, minus the mean, 24, divided by the standard deviation, which is going to be the square root of 19.2. And this equals then this z value of 1.2816. Now if you rearrange this equation for r, you find that r turns out to be 30.1156 and so on. And we've got an observed value of 31. So if this is our critical region, then 31 is clearly to the right of it. It's in the rejection region. So what we can see is that 31, our observed value, is greater than the value that we've got here, 30.11 and so on. So what does this mean that we can conclude? We would write something like this, that it's significant. We would reject HO in favour of the null hypothesis that P was greater than 0.20. So there is evidence that more customers are purchasing sandwiches. OK, so I hope that's given you some idea then of this critical value method that we could use to solve this problem.